thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, it's cool that we have uh, these people here because the, the fewer people we have here, the less nervous I'm, I am, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, so follow Satoshi's trail, yeah. Um, so decentralized UTSO-based smart contract and store of value. When I look at Bitcoin today, that's the key features I, I see in Bitcoin, the three features. So what we do in, at Novos, what, what we're trying to build is the, is the exact same thing. We want to build a decentralized UTSO-based based, um, store of value blockchain but we want to make it more powerful. We want to generalize Bitcoin a little bit and to fix the problem Bitcoin has today. So what, okay. Now, that, that's the gist of what we are doing. And now I'll give a little bit uh, more detailed explanation on, on our design. So first is decentralized. Decentralization is important. It's important not because it's a buzzword. It's because it's um, only through decentralization we can get to censorship resistant. Right? We can be the true owner of our own asset. Um, there are a lot of confusion on, on, on the triangle, on the scalability triangle on decentralization. In our opinion, um, if we think security is about the cost to attack the system. The, the, higher, the higher security means you, you need to pay higher cost to attack the system to, to be success, right? Then decentralization is about the cost to participate in the system. The lower, the lower cost you need to participate in the system, the more, more decentralized this, the system is. It's not about how many nodes in this network, right? So when we, when we try to design uh, a new blockchain, decentralization and security is what we kept in mind. That's why we think scale on layer one is not the way to go. Because no matter how you did it, scale on layer one means there are higher throughput on layer one. And that means you need to process tens of thousand transactions per second which means you also need to verify tens of thousand transactions per second. And that is a direct conflict with the model of Bitcoin, which is don't trust verify, right? Because we, the system is decentralized, you can participate in the system at, at your will. And you can, verif you, you can synchronize all the Bitcoin history. You can synchronize all the blocks, the transactions in history, and verify those transactions by yourself. You don't need to trust and anyone. All you need is a Bitcoin client and you can verify everything. If we go for the layer one um, scale, if we go for the layer one scalability pass, then that will be broken. You will not be able to verify every transaction happen on blockchain because that's, there are just too many of them. So, um, that's why we stick to proof of work instead of proof of stake. And we, um, we don't do sharding. There's no sharding in this system. And we leave the scalability problem to layer two, to state channels, to plasma, to ZK rollup, to stuff like that. And it's interesting, an, an interesting observation is that I'm here for, I'm already been here for two days and there are no other blockchain project talking about proof of work. It seems like we are the only ones there working on proof of work. But it's a bit strange to me because we actually don't, uh, don't um, understand proof of work well. There are a lot of stuff in proof of work system, in proof of work network, we don't know. We don't, we are not very clear about the, like, the dynamics in this network. So I think that the whole atmosphere is, yeah, is too much into proof of stake, but not, there's not much 
there's not enough effort is put on proof of work. There, yeah, I'll save, I'll save the, uh, I'll save time for POW and POS. Yeah, and um, I think one of the reason that so many projects chose proof of stake is because the bootstrap problem of proof of work. If, right, it, for a proof of work blockchain, it's really hard for the blockchain to bootstrap. It's really easy for it to be attacked by, by uh, majority mining power, right? So um, that's why we, uh, we, we decide to design a complete new hash function. It's not very easy, but we did it. Uh, the new hash function is called EgoSong. And the design goal of EgoSong is it must be new. So there's no existing mining hardware can take, ad can take advantage um, to mine uh, CKB. And it must be simple because um, one of the criticism on POW is like the ASIC will be centralized. Like they will be controlled by Bitman or by, by some Chinese guy, right? Um, but we can do something to help um, ASIC manufacturing decentralization, which is we need to, we can make the POW function as simple as possible. So we don't choose some like a memory hard function or ASIC resistant function like Green did. We think it will make um, ASIC manufacturing more centralized because it's really hard to design, produce, to manufacture a GPU. But if you, if you design a secure cryptography uh, hash function, the hash function can be Im implemented in like 100 Python code. Then the design of chips or FPGA is super simple. Of, uh, and the last one is, of course, it, it, it has to be secure. Um, if you are interested, you can check the design on, uh, by, by this link. Yeah? Yeah. EgoSong doesn't solve the bootstrapping problem by itself. So it's good for bootstrap because it's new. At least we know there's no, there's no existing ASIC there can mine this algorithm. So we won't be attacked by, for example, BTC miners. But we still need to consider um, the, the existing GPU miners and FPGA miners. We'll need, that's more of a, uh, I, I think it's more of a community thing. It, it's more about how fast you can evolve. We need to evolve fast enough to pass the um, dangerous zone. You know, we, we need to walk, walk through the danger zone, then we are safe. So not, proof of, not all proof of work systems are created equally secure. POW is not secure by default. You need to do a lot of things to bootstrap it to make it secure. Yeah. And um, we, we also stick to Nakamoto consensus, um, which is that the chain with the most proof of work accumulated is the, is the right, is the valid chain, is the valid fork. We choose that because we did a lot of, a, a lot of research on all kinds of um, consensus we know, and we found that the, uh, the original Nakamoto consensus is still the best. We, there's a paper for that. So I will, I will not talk about it. Um, so we, we stick to proof of work, we stick to Nakamoto consensus, but we also improve it. We, 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 we want to um, extract the, all the potential of Nakamoto consensus. So what, what can we do? Um, a key observation of layer one consensus is the, the performance of consensus is um, is related to the bandwidth use. Um, how efficient we can use the network bandwidth um, 
if you can use network more efficiently, your consensus will have higher throughput. So um, there's some design in NC Max. No. Um, so the name of our consensus algorithm is NC Max. It's Nakamoto consensus maximized in performance. So there's some design in NC Max to to use bandwidth as efficient as possible. And uh, we also make the consensus adaptive to network bandwidth. By adapt, um, because there, the, the, the observation is the network bandwidth also doubles every 80 months. There's a rule named at home's law for this observation. So a good consensus algorithm should adjust itself should adjust itself to adapt to the network bandwidth increase. So, your through, so the layer one throughput can increase as network bandwidth increase, right? Yeah, so we did those things and if you are interested, please check out the paper. Um, the key ingredient is two-phase commit and adaptive block interval. So the block time is dynamic. It's not fixed to 10 minutes, but adjusted according to uncle rate in the, in the network. And, and what we achieved in production system is 120 transactions per second. We actually decreased the throughput intentionally because the, we can achieve three, 300 transactions per second, but we intentionally set the limit um, lower than what the system can, are, is capable of for, for decentralization. So those nodes with, um, with, with minimal hardware can still catch up with other nodes in the network. And we have run testnet for six months. Uh, we got some really good stats. They are, they are those mining posts supporting us, they are, and they are unknown miners. We don't know who he is, but he's just mining. Um, yeah, the hash rate right now is 50 tera hashes per second. Yeah, and we, um, and we are also working on UTXO-based smart contract. If you are familiar with Ethereum, Ethereum is based on account and EVM, right? And we want to, inherit the smart contract model of Bitcoin and generalize it so we can do more on, on, on this UTXO-based blockchain. Um, there's a common pitfall that people think Ethereum is, is powerful is because like EVM is Turing complete. But, but actually, that's not the key reason. The key reason is Ethereum chose a different uh, programming model, which is based on count, and it's like, so you can do um, object-oriented programming on top of EVM. So you have accounts, you write a smart contract, and contract can send message to another contract, right? It's, so think it this way, even if Bitcoin has a Turing complete virtual machine, you will find it's still very difficult to program on Bitcoin because the program model is very limited. You have inputs, you have outputs, but your script is running in a very independent environment and you cannot access data in other contracts, in other transactions, right? That's why we, we want to generalize Bitcoin's program model and, but, but um, inherit the UTXO thing. So, yeah. It's, so how, how do we generalize it? It's quite simple. In UTXO, you have amount and lock. Amount means how many Bitcoin you have, and lock is the pub key, right? It protects your Bitcoin. And we generalize it into what we call cell. And in, in a cell, you have lock, you have capacity, Capacity is the same as amount, but you also have two extra fields, which is data and type. 
In data, you can store arbitrary state. And in type, you can write smart contract to verify the data in this cell, or even the, the state transition, the transition of the data in a transaction. What do I mean by transition, state transition? State transition is what expressed by a transaction. The transaction has the same structure as Bitcoin. It has inputs, it has outputs. Inputs means the old state. Output means the new state. So each transaction is a, each transaction you constructed and broadcast to the network means a state transition authorized by you, and the network will verify the state transition is valid and will, if it's valid, the network will accept your tran transaction. It's the same as Bitcoin. It in Bitcoin it's just um, the state transition is only about coin transfer, but on Novo's blockchain, you can do anything you, you want to do, just like in Ethereum, on Ethereum. Yeah, um, and there is a special thing about capacity of the cell, because the, the capacity is the native asset in Novo's blockchain. So in, in Bitcoin or Ethereum, the Token is used to pay is used is used to pay transaction fee or compute computation fee, but in in uh, in our blockchain, the native token is actually a a uh, is a, the the native token actually represents the space you owned in this blockchain. If you consider like blockchain is a storage. Right? Like in Ethereum, you can write to the world state and read from world state. It, it, it's a big storage. If you think there are like 30 gigabytes on this blockchain, then if you own 10 CK byte, which is the native token in Nomos blockchain, it means you own 10 byte in this, in this storage, in this storage with consensus. And yeah, that was good. And we also generalize the virtual machine part. Uh, CKB used a Turing complete virtual machine, which we call C CKB VM. CKB VM used Risk Five instructions. So um, we we choose Risk Five be because it's a open standard. It's simple. We want our blockchain to be as secure as possible and simplicity is a friend to security. And it's also widely adopted. It's widely implemented, tested, adopted by chip manufacturers in, um, in chips. Um, and there are many compilers support RISC-V instruction set like GCC and LLVM, which means you can use any language you, you like to program on Novos blockchain to write smart contract. You can use Rust, you can use Go, you can even use dynamic languages such as JavaScript, TypeScript, any language. And CKB VM is super efficient. A key property, a key feature of CKB VM is it's quite abstract and efficient. So you can deploy your own cryptographic primitive. For example, if you want to use Blake 2B hash function, you can compile the Blake 2B library, which is written in C, to by GCC to um, to risk five instructions and deploy the compiled binary onto Novos blockchain, and then you can use it. There's no there's no um, native crypto primitives that is hard coded in into the virtual machine, unlike Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, this is really important for layer two protocols because you will eventually need some new crypto primitive when you want to innovate, when you want to devise some new protocol. And when you need that, you, you will find that on Ethereum, you, you just cannot, um, it's really difficult for you to 
write, implement like BLS signature in Solidity and make it inf efficient enough. That's what, what you can do on um, CKB VM. The, the fact is, even the default um, signing algorithm, SEC, SECP256K1, is a smart contract running in CKB VM. So there is no hard-coded um, pre-compile in, in this VM. Even the default crypto prim primitive is a smart contract. Your crypto primitive will run at the same level as the default crypto primitive. And the last one, uh, the, the last feature of Nova's blockchains, we want it to be a store of value. It's a very broad, large topic. I'll just walk through it. Um, Bitcoin today is a store of value, but we know it has some problem. The problem is after maybe 10 years, 20 years, when the issuance of Bitcoin, the block rewards, decrease to a certain level, all the Bitcoin miners have to live on the, by only the transaction fee. That won't be enough. That, that's a problem for Bitcoin. If Bitcoin want to be sustainable in like maybe 50 years, hundreds of years, so how can we solve that problem? If we check, the pro, if we examine the behavior of holders, the profile of holders, it's obvious that holders they don't like interact with blockchain very much, right? They have very low frequent um, interaction with blockchain, but each transaction has relatively high value. What will Bitcoin look like if there are only holders in this network, if Bitcoin is a store of value, right? In 10 years, 20 years, and because we want to go, f we, we want to uh, scale on layer two. We also need to think about what if all the transactions are happening on layer two, right? In a layer network, the layer one will have very few transaction. We'll, we'll, we'll process only um, a few portion of all the transactions in this network. Most of the transaction will happen, will run on layer two. So how can the layer one capture the value of the network at that time, right? There are, there are blockchains there like says that we want to scale on layer one, but we also um, embrace layer two protocols. But we think there might be some problem with that approach because there are some conflicts in the e economic model in that approach. Do, yeah. If you scale on layer two, you will have not enough on transactions on layer one to pay the transaction fee, to support the network, to make sure the network is secure enough because there are just not enough secure budget. So um, we solved it, these two problems with our new economic model based on what we uh, just said based on CK bytes, the native token, based on use the token to claim the storage right on the blockchain. And a hint, a hint is, a hint to, this, to, to the solution is transaction, transaction fee model is not enough, it's not good. We are, going, we are going to launch our mainnet two weeks later. After two years of development on December 16. Thank you.